in the classification of set we have seen several examples of uh, like in the previous courses we have seen several examples of a finite set and an infinite set uh, that is fine okay uh, the countability is a new thing in analysis that is why we we are uh, much interested in countable sets uh, okay now we are formally going to prove the set of all integers is a countable okay uh, we know that uh, while defining the countability we have specified that if a set can be put in one one correspondence with the set of all positive integers it is countable okay if i simply may if i consider the set to be the set of all integers set of all positive integers itself i can define f of x to be x and this turns to be a one one and onto mapping therefore i can establish a one one correspondence between set of all positive integers with itself that is why the set of all positive integers is a countable set so you can have one example for countable set next we are going to prove the set of all integers is countable here i am just going to denote the set of all integers as j and the set of all positive integers as j okay we know that this is the set right okay and i am going to consider the set of all integers in this arrangement okay uh, it is not necessary that one must always consider the set of all integers in this arrangement you may consider it in another way as well so whatever may be the way in which you consider you have to define mapping uh, accordingly to prove that mapping is one one and not two okay here i am not going to prove this completely i am just going to construct the mapping okay the idea of construction of mapping i will be explaining and you will have to prove that mapping is one one and not two okay here <coughs> what i have to do is that i need to define a mapping from a to j or j to a that is either i can define from a to j or i may define from j to a which is most convenient okay so while talking about uh, countability what uh, uh, even i was explaining the definition when i was explaining the definition i was telling you people that countability is all about arrangement this has to be the first element this has to be the next element this has to be this is the thing this is the thing okay that i was always telling so considering that i am going to make use of this thing i am going to make a the mapping from j to a because i am going to associate one with some element i am going to associate two with some element okay this is why i am going to make the association so i am not going to consider this thing i am just going to consider this thing considering this what i have to do i have to associate this one with zero this two with one three with minus one okay so for this construction purpose let me do it separately because uh, this is going to have a odd and even numbers right so for odd let me try something for even let me try something if a common thing works for uh, both of things that is well and good right so let me start with one okay one is the odd number so i have to make this one to zero by some means okay when i do one minus one i am getting zero okay fine two i have to associate this two with one so two minus one is one a uh, two upper two is one i have two possibilities okay and i have to associate the three with minus one okay let me try to bring uh one from three and i will get it okay so in order to bring uh one from three i may go this way or i may go this way i have two options right as of now i have two options i don't know which is to be used as of now let me pass as it is okay uh, next when i go for four what happens okay it is even so finding four okay i, I need to get two from four for that i may subtract this way or i may do this way 
Okay, so by seeing this, this is two minus one, this is two minus two. I need to divide, I need to subtract half of it. Okay, subtracting half like a what ha happening actually here is x minus x by two is happening, right? So when you see it, this is simply x upon two, right? So this and this when I when I try to generalize these things, what exactly happening here? Next, when you go for six, that you will have you have to associate uh, actually uh, six with three. You will subtract six minus three, or uh, simply you will do six upon two. Okay. So whatever may be the value here, you are subtracting half of that. So that is simply if you take that to be x x minus x upon two. When you take the LCM, simply this, you are going to get x upon 2. So, this thing may be considered as the generalization for even cases. So, the even cases is done. So, you can associate 2 with 1, 4 with 2, 6 with 3, and 8 with 4, and 5 with, uh, sorry, 10 with 5, all those things. Okay, this is going good, fine. Okay, now come here. So, I have to associate this 5 with 2. Okay. So 5 minus 3 I have to do else this is going to be 1 and this is also going to be 1 this is going to be 2 or this is also going to be 2. So when I see with this thing I can make some generalization right as of now leave this 0 part okay have that in a pending state and just look for it okay. Next, if I take a 7, it has to be mapped with 3, okay? So, 7 minus 1 upon 2 is going to be 6 upon 2, that is 3. So, if I simply negate it, I am going to get it, right? So, by some means, I am trying to find out the association of 3 and 1, 5 and 2, 7 and 3. Okay, this is working perfectly fine. If I just negate it, what happens? I am getting the requirements. Right? Okay. Mm, here, what we have done is that we have found the generalization for all the even values. Similarly, uh, this must not be the exceptional case. Even the same rule applies here or not. Let us check. Okay. So it is 0 upon 2 when we negate it. Then also I am getting 0. So I have found the generalization. So initially while constructing the function, we are looking for the association by all means. Okay. Among all means, what can be the best generalization? We have to come to some generalization. Okay, we have come to a generalization. This function f of x is simply x of x upon 2 if x is even. Okay, and this is minus times of x minus 1 upon 2 if x is r. Okay, now you have to, you people have to prove this f is 1, 1 and r 2. By proving this is 1, 1 and r 2, you can say that the set of all integers is countable. Do complete this today itself and submit it in Google Classroom. Thank you.